This video is part one of a two-part series of using Git and integrating Git with NetBeans. This video will be an introduction, and in the next video, we're going to see how to actually do the implementation. First of all, what is Git in distributed version control? To be honest with you, this is something that is typically taught very late in a programming uh, sequence. Uh, both Git, GitHub, or uh, both the concept of distributed version control and one other concept, which is debugging. Those two things tend to be saved towards the end of a term. But to be honest, I think they're two of the most fundamental things that we need to learn, and I think they're going to help us save a lot of time and make our life a lot easier. So they're two things that I tend to cover very early. So Git is a distributed version control tool. There are others. There's one called Mercurial, which is all uh, very common. Now, distributed version control. We have to keep in mind that the source code that we're writing is our intellectual property and something that we need to uh, keep in a safe place. So a lot of times we'll have a repository where we will keep our source code, not the compiled code, because you can always generate that, but the source code itself. One nice thing about distributed version control is that you can see change history. So you can see changes over time. That's why I like to use Git and GitHub in this class because I will commit and push to Git for every single change that I make. So if you're watching a video, you can see exactly what I changed to do with exactly the concept of that video. Uh, Git and GitHub, uh, Mercurial, all of these things are common language for programmers. It's something that's basically assumed. And one interesting thing, I use Git very solidly in all of my classes. We at UC have an internal GitHub repository. There's also the public-facing GitHub. Uh, in the Android developer meetup, one skill they say is always lacking in 19 out of 20 candidates is the use of distributed version control. This is, you can have someone who's very sharp as a developer but might not know version control. And, and that's kind of uh, something that might be holding that person back, where if you get the one out of 20 who does know version control, understands it very well, that person is very valuable which is why I like to talk about Git uh, early on so we can get practice with it early on. Now, an important use of Git and GitHub uh, is your resume. To be honest, uh, you know, when I was in college, you typically run to Kinko's and, and have a resume printed on resume bond paper, and then you'd hand that out at a career fair. That's really not as relevant as it used to be. Uh, employers a lot of times are going to ask, do you have a blog? Do you have a YouTube presence? Do you have a GitHub presence? Uh, what kind of projects have you put on GitHub? And again, that's why in this class I want to talk about GitHub. Even though you don't have to use it, I still want to talk about it, and I will use it. And also for the students in the graduate section, I do require a YouTube video uh, so that you can add this to your portfolio. Okay, something very interesting. If I go out to github.com, uh, GitHub, uh, Git and GitHub are two different but very closely related things. Git is the thing that manages the source code repositories. GitHub.com is an implementation of a source code repository, but it's probably one of the most common. Uh, it, it's kind of a lingua franca, if I can say that. It's, it's kind of something where GitHub is just the place where everybody goes. So we can take a look here. This is uh, my GitHub, my public-facing GitHub repository. I said I also have one at, at UC. UC has github.uc.edu. So if we take a look here, this is one of my Android classes, and I have several other uh, classes that I've offered here. So uh, we take a look at Plain Places 15S. This is one I did in the spring of 2015. And you can see here a folder where you can go in and you can uh, click through and you can see all the files that make up this project, just like you would navigate on a file system. But what's really neat, so we get down here, you can see the individual .java classes. What's really neat is if I go back up to the repository uh, and then on the URL I put commits, you can see each of these different commit histories. You can see uh, I made many, many commits and each of these commits had to do with a lecture or maybe part of a lecture. Each of the commits has kind of a unique code here. Okay, we click on that unique code, and I'm not sure how well this shows up on the video, but you can see things that have not changed are in white. Things that have been removed are in red. Things that have been added are in green. 
So it shows you essentially a diff between the previous version and the new version, which is really nice if you're looking over this version history. So as I said, this is GitHub. And the reason I point out GitHub, uh, both the public facing one and the one at UC, either one, you know, uh, they're, they're both very similar. Um, but if you take a look at the about page, you'll see here's the GitHub team. Now, uh, let's click on our team. And this guy right here is Chris, Chris Wamsrath. And uh, he is one of the founders of GitHub. You see a younger guy. And he is a UC alumnus. So what happened is actually he was an English major. And uh, he, um, he, he, he dropped out of college. But after a couple of years, decided to just he really liked programming. And he wanted a way to collaborate easily with his uh, fellow programmers. And so he decided to make this site called GitHub. And uh, it, it, it took off very well. It was it's something that everybody knows what GitHub is. Anyone who's a programmer has heard of GitHub and uh, made him very popular. And uh, a couple of years ago, the university invited him back to give a presentation to our mobile app incubator project. And he very happily came back, paid his own way, gave an outstanding presentation, and uh, then had a, like a happy hour afterwards. And a very nice guy. Um, but it's interesting, a side note on that, the university considers if you have gone to UC for at least a year, you're considered uh, an alumni, a member of the alumni. Uh, so anyway, uh, Chris Wansrath, I think he was here for a few years. Though he didn't graduate, he is definitely considered a, a, an alumnus and uh, you know a, a very highly respected one as well. So I think it's funny how a lot of times we have a reputation in Cincinnati for being behind the times. Uh, GitHub was founded by a Cincinnatian and uh, one of the first Java users groups in the whole world was founded in Cincinnati, also by University of Cincinnati students. So, uh, you know, we have a legacy we need to hold up. Let's, let's keep our eyes open for the next big thing because our, our active students and our alumnus have done a great job and uh, let's keep that up. Okay, some of the commands that we're gonna see. Clone is how we can clone a repository. Git is really meant it's not, I won't say mint, but it, it's really great if you're working with multiple people on a project. Uh, and so what you'll do a lot of times is one person will commit a project and then everybody else will clone the project locally. And then we can work together through a series of commands, pull, update, commit, and push that we'll see here. Uh, I, the time I was really sold on distributed version control, I had, a, this is early on when we were offering Android programming, and one group did their final group presentation and really stood out. I mean, a lot of them were, a lot of very good projects, don't get me wrong, but there was one group that really, really did well, worked well together. And I, I, and I asked them, just frankly, why did you do so well? What, what was the deciding factor? And they said, well, we all decided that we were gonna standardize on using GitHub and Git, and so it helped us to work together. It helped us to not email zip files around and that kind of stuff. So clone would be cloning from one repository to another. Now, when I say one repository to another, I want to reinforce that Git is a distributed version control system, which means there's not necessarily just one central repository, but there are several repositories. When you install Git on your computer, you're going to have a Git repository on your computer. You also might have one at github.com. You also might have one at UC's implementation at uh, github.uc.edu. So you don't have to just commit to one repository. This makes this makes a whole lot of sense also if you have a distributed team, if you have somebody working on a feature, or really where it really makes sense is if you are a software vendor and you have a reseller network where people can take your source code, enhance it, and then resell it. And maybe you think, oh, I'd never do that. But uh, I can tell you that my full-time employer in point of sale has exactly that model where uh, we sell natively in North America and in the United Kingdom, but then in France, Australia, and Italy, uh, a lot of times the retailers in those countries want to have local knowledge, and specifically in France and Italy, they want to speak with a native speaker. And so it's easiest to, uh, it's easiest to just have a company there that licenses the source code, resells it, but then also does enhancements for those local markets, like the fashion market in, in Italy, 
or some of the interesting rules that they have for point of sale in France. So that's where this works out well. In any case, once you've cloned, you can pull, which means you're pulling the change sets from the remote repository down to your local repository. And by change sets, I mean these list of things with these numbers here, all of the changes from the last time you pulled until the most recent time uh, you pulled. Uh, a pull is almost always followed by an update, which means, okay, take those changes and bring them into your development environment. Now, on the other way around, we're going to work on something and we're going to commit. A commit merely means that though you've created a new change set in your local repository based on the changes you've made since your last commit. And a commit is what actually generates one of these unique kind of hash code numbers that we have here. So that's a commit. Now, you can commit all you want to your local repository, and that's highly encouraged because you can always go back to a previous commit. If you mess something up, you can always revert back. A push means take your changes locally and push them up to a remote repository. So these are things that I'm going to be doing a lot this semester. And as I said, you don't, you don't necessarily have to do it. It is a good idea, but you might want to do it just so that you can get a local view of the changes I'm making. We don't have to email around zip files. You don't have to uh, you maybe pause a recording and see what I typed. All you need to do is, is clone a branch local or clone uh, the repository and use it. So in the next video, we're going to do a hands-on exercise. I am going to make some changes in my local NetBeans on my laptop. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remote into our virtual lab environment, and I'm going to clone those changes. Now, what's interesting is the my local laptop is just my laptop. The UC virtual labs are essentially virtual machines. So a completely different machine running at UC, completely different from my laptop. Now, remember, one of the stipulations of the UC virtual labs is that your work is not saved on that computer. It gets wiped out and re-imaged every time uh, you go back into the virtual labs. That's where GitHub is really handy because uh, you can do all your work in that virtual environment, the virtual session, commit, push, close, cut the grass, get some lunch, whatever you want to do, go back into the virtual environment, and then clone back down uh, your repository where you've saved your changes. So it works very well on that model. So we'll describe that more in the next video. I look forward to seeing you then.